the bounce house. And it's easy to see why they call it that. Home of the night of UCF. What do you think about that? And this crowd is ready for a big one. Little gets the blood boiling, quite like a rivalry game. Barbs, shots, trash talk, things that go on throughout the week will now all be settled on this field. As we'll see a squad from the AAC, the South Florida Bulls, taking on a team from the Big 12, the UCF Knights. For EA Sports College Football, Reese Davis with you alongside David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. Time to get this game started. The Bulls will boot it away to start the game. On the move from inside his five. He was hoping for something a little more dynamic, but they get him on the ground at the 20. So the UCF Knights offense will get the first swing of the game. And here's the man they rally around, and he has earned that type of respect, David. You dang right. You earn it by doing it, and he's done it at such a high level. Everyone believes in this young man, and Palmer, there's a reason why. You're right, David. He's been in the big moments, and he's won the big games. This guy delivers when the game is on the line. I love when players understand situations and they understand where the first down marker is and they understand where I got to get to. A lot of people you'll see run north-south and try to bounce out wide and make big plays. Sometimes it's not about making big plays. Sometimes it's about getting that first down to make sure I get an extra set of downs instead of trying to make those big touchdown runs. They have relished this tight victory since the last time these two got together, Pollock. Yeah, it's just winning is beautiful. And when you beat your rival and you get those bragging rights, Palmer, it is a glorious thing for a whole year and sometimes longer. Well, that's the best thing about rivalry games like this. For the winning team, whoever pulls this one out here today, their fans are going to be bragging about this one for a long time. They were all over him, nowhere to go as that third down play turned into a disaster. I love this linebacker because he's able to dissect what's happening in front of him and he reacts downhill, uses his speed to get to the line of scrimmage and create the negative play. And he'll have enough for the first down at the 42. And how about that call? You're right around midfield, fourth down on your opening drive. So you run the football and you put your trust and confidence in your offensive line up front to get it done and keep your offense on the field. That is impressive. Back to pass. It's Jefferson. And that's a mistake you don't expect to see from a senior, and he is lucky to get it back. This offense has a second down play. The back goes in motion. After the incompletion, back to the passing game. Snags it over the middle. And how about that catch and run? So dangerous, this guy. Good job by the receiver there not to run into coverage, but to find a spot that the quarterback could throw him the ball. Yeah, on those types of routes, Reese, they say if you're looking, you're booking. So if that's man coverage, the receiver's staring at the quarterback all the way across the field. That time, the receiver didn't give the quarterback his eyes, so they were on the same page. They both knew it was zone, and they executed that perfectly. A strike downfield. Touchdown, Knights! And once he found open space, the band might as well start playing. They can use this first score to sort of set the tone, guys, in this rivalry matchup. Man, doesn't this feel good to come out, score early, get the crowd involved, get the nerves out of the way, Palmer, when you're playing in a big rivalry game? Yeah, and, and I feel like momentum is always a big thing in any game, but in rivalry games, it's that much more important because everybody is going to feed off that first score now. Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. And the extra point is good, and it's 7-0. So it's an 80-yard drive, and the score comes on a pass from 40 yards out.
Lining up to cover the kick after that touchdown drive. What kind of field position can he help them with on the return? He's brought down at the 16, would have been much better off to take the touchback. So the USF Bulls offense taking the field first chance we have to see them today. On first down, here comes this offense. On the ground, it's Lamb. Just searching and working for the running room as he gets it out to the 26. And the Bulls will hustle to the line. The run to the left. And maybe he'll get back to the line of scrimmage, but no more than that. Facing a third down is short from the 26. On the option. He'll pitch it. And that might have been a bad read as the defense just swarms all over the pitch man. This is an interesting decision now for the head coach. You're trailing very early in the game. There's a lot of football left. But you're in a situation where you could go for it here and try and answer after your defense gave up that touchdown on the opening drive. He's brought down, but a really solid effort to pick up every bit of yardage he could on the punt return. UCF has it once again. What do you think about that? How about that last drive? Just carved him up in the air, David. Yeah, and how about that quarterback? You gave him the ball, and he delivered the goods. Great job taking apart the defense, Jesse, on that last drive. He really did, David. I mean, that was a master class in just reading coverage and being accurate. Dropping back, it's Jefferson. They're bringing heat. And they got him for the sack. Defense came on the field with fresh legs, and here on just the second play of the drive, they're able to get a sack. This is a third and long. Looking downfield, and he needs a bunch. Coming after him. And the pressure is coming in, and they get him again. The Knights line up to punt it away. Three and out, they got stuck in reverse. They hope the punt can bail them out. He'll bring it back. It's Atkins. Coverage team able to put a stop to that return at the 42-yard line. Plenty of time for one more snap before the end of the quarter. Out of the shotgun, they go to the ground. They throw it in reverse as that's the final play here in the first period. That's the end of the quarter, and UCF has the lead. We've played one. Before we move on, let's have a look at the stats. They've swapped ends of the field, and we're ready to go in the second. We'll get this quarter going with a second down play. Looking to pass on second down. Caught in the backfield at Singletary. Excellent job working through the air there, finding a hole in that defense and picking up a first down. A lot of urgency for this offense. Well, I know the tight end did some good things after the catch, but got to give the quarterback credit, too, for the location of the throw. Because he put it out in front of his big man, he was able to make the catch and accelerate, creating some distance there between him and the defense. The Bulls headed quickly to the line. Hand off from the gun. One step wrap, two step squeeze. This junior knows how to get him on the ground. They get to the line quickly. The give to the tailback. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. Coaches preach all week about physicality, physicality. That is how you do it. That is how you put it on tape. That's how you show everybody in the locker room, everybody on the field, this is how our defense is going to be. Do not run the football because we will knock you senseless. The UCF offense back on the field ready to go to work. 
Boy, three and out last time, David. They'd like to be more productive this time around. Yeah, in the last drive, nothing really clicked. No rhythm. Got off the field really, really quickly. They need to put something together here. Yeah, David, bad execution on that last drive. So they got to take a collective breath and start playing like a unit on this one. Grabbed over the middle. It's Townsend. He's close to the first down, but they're going to mark him just a little short. Routes like that are great times to be quarterbacks. I got great, fast, speedy guys on the outside. Quick drag route, get the ball in his hands, let him do the rest. On third and short, the power run here. He gets it oh so close to the first down marker, but I think he's going to be a touch short. Well, the offense tries to pick up that first by running it on third down. No can do, and that's really been the theme all game long. This defense has just been better at the point of attack, shutting down this run game. There was never a doubt about going for it there. If you don't go for it, you send the message to your team you don't believe in. Yeah, I mean, that close, literally, you're talking about falling forward. I can't fall forward and get inches. Oh, man, I'm taking my chances with that. Now the UCF offense ready to go back to work. They were really aggressive going for it in their own end last time. It put them in a tough spot, David. Yeah, aggressive, reckless. They got to find the balance with this offense to really be productive. And last possession they went for it, they rolled the dice, Palmer, and it didn't work out for them. Yeah, if you're better on third down moving forward, though, you can keep yourself out of those situations. They made the defense pay with that last big chunk of yardage. Now first and 10 from the 30. He's got an open man. He's brought down, but there's a flag on the field. Let's see what the call is. The officials throw the flag, but the offense won't need it. They'll decline that and keep the big play. The Knights trying to pay off the threat on first and goal. Back to pass, it's Jefferson. He snares it in the end zone. Touchdown, UCF! Look, it's still early, but we have some real distance being put on the scoreboard right now. You do. It's early, but you got to find something positive. Right now, everything going in the other direction. So how are you going to respond when you've been hitting the mouth early in this football game? you got to find something positive quick. They'll try to add another to their lead. And the extra point makes it 14-0. Quick strike offense on that three-play scoring drive. And they close the deal with the seven-yarder for the score. About to kick it off after punching it in for the touchdown. From a couple of yards deep, he'll bring it out. And they'll haul down the returner to start us on the next drive. South Florida has it back, and the Bulls' offense will return to the field. Not a lot of time left here in the half. Let's see if they can cut into this lead. And this drive isn't a must score, but, man, you look at the scoreboard. You're down two scores. Jesse, you got a good opportunity. Create some momentum. Cut it to a one-score game. This is an important possession. Yeah, it's important to create that momentum now, David, too, and not wait to get it going here at the start of the third quarter. You've got one drive here to get a couple of points. You've got to start erasing and chipping away at this deficit. This could be where the game turns right here. He'll throw on third down. With the catch, it's Lamb. And they knock him down, but he got past the line to gain. There's a timeout called as this offense tries to find a way to draw a little closer. And the Bulls will snap it on first and ten. He wants to throw. Got it in the middle. It's Singletary. There's a timeout on the field. Tight game here late in the first half. They've got four receivers out there, two on either side on second and three. He's looking to throw. He's right on target. They'll get it to the 48. No need to measure. It's a first down. Clock stops momentarily for the first down. They'll hurry to the line. 
Trying to find his man on first down. Quickly complete. And just a short, safe pass play. They pick up a few. Quick tempo, no huddle offense. Second down, clock's running. Brown will throw it. Fires on the run. And it slips through his fingers. Incomplete. That would have been a huge gain if he could have squeezed it. Couldn't find his man last time. That leaves him with a third and six. From the gun, wants to pass. Got him downfield. And this defense was flailing as he weaved his way and got down to the 26. Wow, and what a great job by that quarterback finding his open receiver on third down. You know, guys, one of the most telling stats at the end of the game is third down conversion percentage. If you're a great third down team, it's invaluable to your offensive success, and that's why teams drill third down so much in practice. Finally, this offense starting to show a little juice. They've got a first and ten. Getting some heat. And he'll chuck it into the cheap seats there and save the down. Nobody getting open there. Just a few seconds remaining here as they try to put something up before halftime. He's back to throw on second down. And he needed a little bit wider field as that one falls out of bounds. You know the saying, no risk it, no biscuit. If you want big plays on offense, you've got to be able to take shots. They didn't hit that one, but moving ahead in the second half, expect this offense to keep dialing them up. It's good. He could have hit a string right in the middle of the uprights there. That late in the half field goal always gives you a little boost going to the locker room, and they'll need to finish off these final few seconds and not allow them to answer. Here's the return from inside his tent. And the return man reaches the end of the line, and down he goes. And holding on to a first-half lead, this offense will play it safe, take a knee, and head to the locker room. That's the end of the second quarter. That means it's time to join Kevin in our halftime update. Fellas, what an environment there today. All the animosity and flat-out hatred that comes with a good old-fashioned rivalry game on display in that first half. And I get it. A lot of coaches will say the difference between winning and losing comes down to stopping big plays and getting big plays. But if you ask me, it's more about how good you are on third down and how efficient you are in keeping drives alive. Those two stats can help you break the will of even the best defenses and help you come out on top. The Knights will boot it away to start the second half. Here he comes from inside his own five. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage and he'll be stopped at the 17. South Florida ready to send the offense back onto the field. Maybe adjustments or attitude or attitude adjustments. They've got to find a way to run the ball at least some here in the second half. I do think you said something that's important. I think running the football is an attitude. Like, it starts with the offensive lineman and being physical, having a nasty attitude, running back, same thing. I think they need more of that in the second half. You know, and I think if any of you're this defense, you have an opportunity to make a statement here. Yeah, I know you guys went in at halftime and you riled yourselves up and you told yourself that you think you can run the ball on us. On this very first drive, we're going to prove to you just like in the first 30 minutes, you cannot. On third and short, just trying to get enough for the first down. Brought down to the ground, but he has enough for the first down. The Bulls come to the line in the hurry up. Finds his man down the middle. Good, solid pickup on that one. They've got it out to the 40, and it's first down. Offense in the hurry up. I don't know if that was a bust defensively, but there was nobody in the middle of the field that time, making it way too easy for the offense to pick up a chunk play in the middle. Got his man downfield. And he almost ran away from everybody on that one. A huge pickup on that play. A 
off the play fake on first down to throw. Looking for an open area to his left. They'll rip off eight on that play. It's second and two. Offense, quick tempo. That is what I'm talking about. Every defensive player want those opportunities. Quarterbacks slide so much. When you can get a big hit on them, that's exactly what you want to do. Make him feel that now so it hurts later in the game. They get him on the ground, but not before he gets enough for the first down. Trying to cap this drive with the pass. Gets open down the middle. That completion takes him down to the seven-yard line, and they are ready to strike. First and goal, and a great opportunity to slice into this lead. They'll try to get it in with the run. And he'll race it to the house. Touchdown, USF! Sometimes we ask coaches about halftime adjustments, and they go blah, 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 blah. And then sometimes they make some good ones. <laughs> sometimes that blah, 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 blah actually works, but it's working now. But it might be too little too late, but at least you got the party started. Now they'll try the two-point conversion and try to crawl within three. They're going to run it. He's back in the end zone for the two-point conversion and followed the touchdown as he single-handedly is trying to keep them in it. About to kick it away after scoring the touchdown. On the run from inside his own five. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. UCF has it once again. What do you think about that? Looking to throw, it's Jefferson. They're trying to get to him. Wide open downfield. And they'll finally bring him down after he rips off a huge play. And there was no question in that scenario. That's where the quarterback was going. He knew he had his receiver in a matchup that he liked, running a route where he would find himself open. Nice job between those two. Let's go. Big play to start this drive. Now they'll snap it from the 39. Give to the running back. A seven-yard pickup. It'll be second and three. Coaches always harp about staying ahead of the chains. And when you can run with that type of efficiency on first down, man, you are doing just that. Looking to throw on second down. And that's going to be incomplete. A lot of contact on the play, but no flags. It'll be third down. The Knights in the hurry up. To the ground to try to move the chains. They've got it to the 49-yard line, and they'll move the chains. Well, they picked up that first running the football. That's good news for an offensive line that really has been getting pushed around and bullied in this game so far. Let's see what happens moving forward. Grabbed in the backfield. It's Pittman. And good coverage by the defense. Just a short game. You know, tight ends are such matchup nightmares and problems for defense. They're too big for DBs to cover, and they're too fast for linebackers to cover. You saw it right there. They'll ride the running back and leave it with him. And they try the middle of this defense, and that is not happening. That's the end of the quarter, and UCF has the lead. They're sitting in a strong position here with the lead. Let's take a look at our game summary. One quarter to go, and might we have the makings of a classic fourth quarter finish. We've got this third down play to open the quarter. Back to throw. It's Jefferson. Unloads to the wideout. Pulls it in. And he was loose and in the open field and on his way. A tremendous pickup on that one. And offense has practiced the situation. This is four-minute offense. You've got the lead late in the game. You're trying to bleed the clock and just get first downs. They do that. They stay in bounds, and the clock keeps ticking. He breaks a tackle. 
And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Just keep running the football. Everything is going according to plan right now. They've been able to stay on the field. They put some nice plays together back to back to back and they're bleeding the clock. This is exactly what you practice for, for situations like this. Just keep doing what you're doing. They'll use the running game on first and goal. And he waltzes in for the score. Touchdown, Knights! Up and over, Yama will be there into the end zone. And, and you don't want to leave your feet very often in football, but this is one of those areas where you can in the end zone, near the goal line, you smell it. A lot of bodies in front of you. Just get up, get over top of them, get that touchdown. Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. And the extra point extends the lead to double figures at 10. They put together an 81-yard drive. And what a way to finish it with a nine-yard touchdown run. The kickoff team on the field as they'll send this one away. The returner will field it and bring it back. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. South Florida has it back, and the Bulls' offense will return to the field. After standing on the sideline and watching that long touchdown drive, they really need to put something together to give their defense a rest. And that's a real thing, man. Like, you've played a lot of plays, you get worn out, you need a chance to go decompress on the sideline, get some oxygen. Palmer, now it's on this offense. Yeah, this is the definition of complimentary football because it's a two-pronged problem. You've got to score points and answer, but you've also got to take your time and give your defense an opportunity to get their win. He'll come out throwing on first down. And this will be incomplete. A big hit there forces second down. Couldn't make the connection last time. Let's see if they throw it again. Brown wants to pass. That pressure got to him, and he just had to chuck it out of bounds. Now facing a third and long. assault continues another incompletion on third down after that incompletion fourth and long now on your own side of the field you're trailing in the fourth quarter what's your go-to play call here in the passing game where is the matchup that you trust in to come up with a big one to give yourself a chance to stay alive and win this game the incomplete pass ends a frustrating series and they turn it over on downs a great spot to start this drive for the offense. Smart move to keep it on the ground. And he's able to find a little bit of running room before they get him down. And I think if you're the head coach, defensively now, obviously, you've got three timeouts in your back pocket. You're trailing at this point, and the offense is going to be running the football, trying to bleed the clock. They're going to take as much time off the game clock as they can before snapping it. You've got to start thinking about using some of those timeouts. No reason to rush here. You want to be efficient, you want to finish the deal, but you might as well milk that clock. A hundred percent. Make it tick. The, the clock is your friend. Go. You've Ready. got the lead. Single, You've got single. the football in good position. Hang on to it and milk that clock. Ready. Turning to the running game on first and goal. He bullies his way all the way down to the five-yard line. And this is where the offense just breathes. Just take your time, huddle up. I'm in absolutely no hurry. I got the lead. I want to continue to run that clock. No false starts, no penalties. Let that clock tick down and then punch it in the end zone to add to this lead. And he gets it back to the four-yard line. No farther than that. No gain on the play. We've reached a two-minute warning, and this offense will be quite content just to drain the rest of the time away. If they can pay off this third and goal with a touchdown, it might be getting a little tough to swallow over there on the other sideline. Quick timeout call by the defense, stopping the clock to save as much time as possible for their offense. So here we are on fourth down, and this field goal kicker is going to face all the pressure in the world. Splits the uprights right down the middle, and that will extend their lead even further.
So after putting three on the board, the kickoff team is out there ready to boot it away. And they thought about a return, then thought better of it. They'll bring it out to the 25. South Florida ready to send the offense back onto the field. We'll see if that failed fourth down in their own end last time, David, sort of curbed some of the aggressiveness. Well, you hear about it all the time in football. Go for it. Be aggressive. The problem is when you get stopped, sometimes it puts you in a hole. And Jesse, now the offense has to come out and respond. They were really disappointed not getting that first down. You can see it on the sideline. So let's just see if that's kind of galvanized them a little bit here to go make a statement and get some points. Brown will throw it. He wants a big play here late. Holds it in on the left. Touchdown, South Florida. And once he got away from the D, they had no shot at catching him. Yeah, and, and that's step one. Great job by this offense getting in the end zone. Now you got to go get the stop. you got to get the football back. you got to find a way to do something to create a turnover, get an onside to get the football back, to get back in this football game. Getting set for the point after. And it's up and good as they draw just a touch closer. They wasted no time on that drive. Got it on their 25, and two plays later, they're in the end zone. They got one of the touchdowns they needed, and they'll try to get the ball back right now with the onside kick. He's able to grab the football, and the hands team gets the job done. The UCF offense back on the field, ready to go to work. These are the games. These are the moments. This is the opportunity for the finish that people remember in rivalries like this one. And those highlights that are shown for years and years to come. These big-time moments, Palmer, coming down to the wire, who steps up and makes the big-time play. And this is why you lift the weights in the offseason. This is why you do all the gassers and all the sprints. For moments like this, game on the line in one of the biggest games of the year. They'll keep it on the ground. He's knocked down in the backfield. He'll lose a couple. Timeout called there by the defense. Desperate to get the ball back and save as much time as possible. A third and long coming up here. They'll try to keep this clock moving on the ground. And he's not going to make it. The defense denying him the first down. So on fourth down, here comes the field goal kicker in a huge spot. And he missed it. No good. The lead is still six after the miss. South Florida has it back, and the Bulls' offense will return to the field. There's plenty of time to work with here, but they have to be highly efficient in their attack, Jesse. So it comes down to the quarterback position, too, Reese. Don't let the moment get too big. Play within yourself, David, because this guy's practiced the situation before. No doubt. Use the sidelines. They're your friend. I don't have to take deep shots. Throw beyond the first down marker so I can stop that clock for a little bit and possibly use my timeouts. Catch in the middle. It's Atkins. And he's brought down after a huge completion. Now they've got to hustle to the line and get set. And they'll spike the ball to try to save as much time as they can. Four wide out set, three of them to the left on second and ten. Brown wants to pass. Fires to the wide out. And it's picked off at the goal line. That's a way to make a stand. And he's brought down after the pick, but not before putting his offense in business. Well, we've seen this defense make plays time and time again in this game. They may have just sealed it with that take.
Now the UCF offense ready to go back to work. And now, Jesse, the art here is to find the balance between milking the clock and trying to get another score. I think if you're the coaching staff, too, you like to see your team play its best in the fourth quarter, right? Defense just did their job, so offense now, David, has to go out and handle their business. Yeah, you got the momentum. Because of the defense, they've given you some momentum. They've given you a great opportunity to take hold of this game and really put a stamp on it. You know what's great about rivalry games? Each side hates every wretched breath the other one sucks into their greedy lungs. Figuratively speaking, of course, and when you win, oh, oh, oh is that sweet. It's glorious to, to be able to brag, to be able to text message your buddies, to be able to post stuff on social media. It's a lot of fun. I think fans like it more than anybody, but it's something that you every year you have a couple games starred. This was one of them, Jesse. They took care of business, and now you move on to the next. They really did. We saw some great individual efforts in this game by the winning team, too. So cool to see some of these players that have had terrific collegiate careers make some of the biggest plays of their lives in this game, in a rivalry game that just means so much. This was a fun one to call.